Next week marks the third anniversary of that tragic plane crash that claimed 96 lives, including that of the Polish president Lech Kaczynski. The Polish Air Force plane went down in Russia near the city of Smolensk. Officials have conducted an investigation and they've made conclusions about the cause of the crash, but there are a handful of credible scientists who dispute the official findings, and Dr. Wieslaw Binyenda is one of those people, and he's the chairman of the Department of Civil Engineering at the University of Akron, and he's been conducting his own scientific analysis of the crash. So, Dr. Binyenda, let's start at the beginning. What has the official investigation pegged as the cause of the crash? Well, the official investigation cause was pil pilot's error. But contrary to the report, the, the, there was no pilot error. There was no pressure uh, from the generals who are in the cockpit. Pilots made decision to uh, not to land at 100 meters above the ground. They tried to do everything not to land. And uh, the plane uh, uh, crashed from the altitude of 30 meters when it was taking off, w when it was flying away. Okay, so then what do you think is the reason that this plane went down? If, if you're disputing the official report, what is the hypothesis that you're working with? the information from the sensors that, that uh, collect the altitude of the airplane that were read in the United States, they show that the plane was 26 meters above the ground at the minimum in all, all the time. So it, it means that the plane never hit the, the tree, and which is true with the forensic. So, but the wing uh, was lost uh, from this airplane. So if you look at the wing that, that uh, was lost, you can see that uh, behind the leading edge, which is not damaged, there's a big hole. So what can produce big hole at the wing behind the leading edge? Definitely not three. The only reason for the big hole is if there's explosion in the wing. So you have the explosion that is hypothesis for the losing the wing at this airplane. So, so their, their theory just doesn't hold water. Absolutely, and this is against the physics. If you look in the trajectory that was uh, offered by Russian investigating committee, they uh, show that the plane, after losing the wing, increased altitude from 5 meters uh, to 30 meters. Without the wing, uh, that would be impossible. So then you will ask why they had to put that type of increase of the altitude. Well, the claim was that the plane rotated 180 degrees and if it would fly at the five meters, which uh, would not be able to fly uh, up, then would not be able to rotate because it is too big airplane and it will hit the ground ra right away. What kind of technology are you using in your investigation? Well, I'm using the uh, technology that together with uh, other scientists of NASA, FAA, and the uh, other universities, we have developed together with program LSDINA, LS, company LSTC. The same uh, methodology was used to analyze the shuttle Columbia after the crash. And also, uh, Dr. Bocieri from California used exactly the same methodology, the same program, to analyze experiment that was done by FAA in 1965 with the airplane called Constellation. So I just repeated the same work. I have quite a big confidence with my results. Well, it's a, it's a compelling hypothesis. We'll be following this very carefully. Thanks for speaking to us today. Thank you. This Sunday, May Day, is premiering on Discovery at 9 p.m., so you're definitely going to want to tune in to learn more about the official investigation. Text messages, emails, and social network updates have become such popular forms of communication that your handwriting skills could take a hit. I know mine have. Now, the Use Your Own Handwriting app for iPhone and iPad lets you brush up on those skills by using your finger to actually write the letters on the touch screen rather than typing them out. Turn the phone on its side and the app takes advantage of your landscape mode real estate by auto sliding the screen over so that you never run out of room. Pop your device back up vertically in portrait mode to view what you've just written. An algorithm applies basic rules for pen angles to render your handwriting into fancy calligraphy. Plus, you've got several themes and font colors to choose from. Not only do you keep those handwriting skills fresh, but you give your grocery list that extra bit of pizzazz that you just can't get with a touch keyboard. 
Those handwriting skills are an important part of our education, and in the 21st century, so is being familiar with the technology that is so integrated into our lives. Let's check out the classroom of the future. Now, BC's Riverside Secondary School in Port Coquitlam has teamed up with Samsung Canada to provide a digital learning environment for the school's grade 11 physics class. 31 Samsung Galaxy Note units and a 65-inch digital e-board are seamlessly integrated so that the students and the teachers have an environment that provides real-time screen and content sharing. Now, the result is an interactive form of classroom communication that, according to the teachers, is already bringing a dynamic energy to the class, along with increased student engagement and lesson comprehension. Now, I want to hear how you guys feel about these high-tech classrooms, so hit me up with those opinions at DP underscore Tech Lucas. Up next, high speed and comfort, a catamaran for all types of sailors. That's right after the break. <laughs> 